Hey guys, Cody Baramani here with the Eastwood Company. Today we're talking about TIG welders and TIG welding. We get a lot of comments, questions, asking how difficult it is to TIG weld. Well, today we're going to show you. We got our camera guy, Joe Mounts. He's going to show you how to TIG weld. Joe, you ever TIG welded before? I've uh, TIG welded a few times, uh, just here and there, just being around them. Uh, but ultimately, I'm not very good or practiced. So. And what TIG welder have you used? Uh, mostly I've used the TIG 200 ACDC. Okay. Well, we offer three TIG welders here at the Eastwood Company. We have the TIG 200 ACDC, our TIG 200 Digital, and the TIG 200 DC. TIG 200 DC is a great value if you're just going to weld steel. It's easy to set up, easy to use. TIG 200 Digital, if you're a professional, you need pulse, frequency adjustment. That's the machine for you. It's not the easiest to get dialed in, but once you do, it's perfect. Our TIG 200 ACDC, it's our most popular machine. It's easy to set up, easy to use. You can weld steel, stainless, and aluminum. The front knob layout's pretty simple. What do you think, Joe? You ready to get started? I'm ready. All right, let's clear this table off, set the machine up, and start welding. Yeah, let's do it. Nice, Joe. All right, so it looks like we're all set up. We got the TIG 200 ready to go. We got a fresh tungsten in there. Got our tungsten grinder in case we have to sharpen it back up. And we got some eighth inch steel plate. Great. So why don't you check out our reference chart that we have up there and see what setting we need for this eighth inch steel plate. Okay. So first I'll select the material. Steel, material thickness, 1 8 DC polarity, yep. amperage between 75 and 125. So we're on DC. Uh, put this between 75 and 125. Well, and we're actually going to set that also on our foot pedal here, since we're going to have you use the foot pedal. Okay. So how should I set it on the machine? So on the machine, it doesn't matter too much. Just set it on your foot pedal here. We're, we'll actually probably set that right to 125. Okay. And then if you need to use a little less heat, you can back off on the foot pedal. Great. That makes okay. sense. And to do that, you also want to hit that foot pedal setting there. Awesome. All right, so pre-flow, we want 0.4. So here we are, 0.4. Post-flow is going to be six seconds. Post-flow. And clearance effect at zero. So we should be set. Yep. Now one, one thing too, this machine does have stick functionality. So when we're going to TIG weld, you do want to make sure you set it to TIG as well. OK. Sweet. Yeah, let's get grounded. Let's get our gas going. We need 100% argon. Great, we're, and, uh, we're already hooked up. I saw you did clean these plates. What did you clean the steel plates with? I used um, the low VOC pre. Okay, very good. Yeah, when you're TIG welding, you want everything as clean as possible. Any contamination, it's going to throw your weld off. Okay, great. Cool, you ready to get started? Give yeah. it a shot. Let's do this. All right, Joe, looks like we're all set up, ready to go here. The first thing we're going to have Joe do is a fusion weld. That involves no filler rod, and it's just moving the TIG torch. So we're going to have Joe take the TIG torch between the two pieces. You want to hold it vertical, and then come back just a little towards your direction of travel. You're going to work slowly along the weld, fusing those two pieces of metal together, and getting down the rhythm and movement needed to make a TIG weld. After you do that a couple times, then we'll start adding in some filler rod. What All do right. you think? You ready to go? Yeah, let's give it a whirl. Let's give it a shot. All right, so the first thing you want to do is tack these two pieces together. Just hit down on the pedal, get a good puddle established, and let off. Okay. Same thing on each side, and then you'll move from right to left so it's your right handed. Yeah, let's try it. That'll work. Sweet. Yep. And you can, you can hold it down a little bit longer than what you're doing. Right that's good. That's a nice. Sweet. Feel good. You got a little bit of gap there still, which is good. Help with penetration. Okay. And now you can just work from right to left and just advance half a puddle width at a time. Okay. Give yourself a little bit of overlap. Of, you know, move, pause, move, pause, move. Okay. Make sense? Yeah, I think I got it. Cool. All 
All right, Joe, once you start your arc, hold your torch at that spot until you see your puddle form. Then you can begin moving along the workpiece and making your weld. Now when you're ready to finish, just let off the pedal, but don't move your torch. That's going to give you post flow and prevent any cracking. Nice. Looks good, Joe. Looks real good. And the more you do it, the more consistent you're going to get. It just yeah. takes a little bit of practice, but you got a nice strong weld there. What do you say we try adding some filler on? I think I'm ready for it. All right, Joe, we got some filler rod. Okay. Now, let's show everybody how we're going to use this filler rod. We're going to do the same weld that we did before, but now each time we pause, we're going to dip a piece of the filler rod in. So we're going to move, dip, move. Adding this filler rod is going to create a lot of strength. It's going to prevent any undercut from happening, and it's just going to make a better weld. All right. You feel like you're ready to give it a shot? Yeah, I think I can do it. There you go. So now do the same tacks that you did before. Nope. All right. Am I ready to rock? Yeah. Yep, get your, get your weld established, and then just start dipping that filler rod in. And just like last time, sit there, let the post blow kick off. That's going to ensure you don't get any crash. Very nice. How do I do? Very good. So now you can see, comparing the two, this is a little undercut and just flat. This is a little proud. This has that filler material in there. This is a much stronger weld by adding that filler material. Excellent. Yeah. And consistency is going to come with practice, but what you have there certainly is going to be strong. Now, does that show kind of, does that show temperature? Yeah, so, so it also shows you have more heat into this material as you got going. So you could have backed off a little on the amperage for that second, that last third. Yeah, I see that right there. Yep, hmm. but not bad, not bad at all, Joe. What do you think? Not much practice, you were able to get something proud of? Yeah, I like it. Let's start, uh, let's fab up a uh, exhaust or something now. <laughs> well, with more practice, I'm sure that's possible. So Joe, what do you think? Ready to fab up that exhaust system? I think I'm ready, I think I'm ready. Well, you can see with a lot of practice, it's easy to build your skills. You know, this is best case scenario here. It certainly gets a little more difficult as you get into position, welding tubing, thin plate like that. But you can see, you just keep on doing this. You're gonna build your skill level. You'll be able to get there. So aside from the welder itself, what other uh, supplies or accessories would a beginner like me need? Well, the first thing you're gonna wanna get is some good safety equipment. We got on our welding jackets here. We also carry a full line of welding gloves from Tillman. And then we have a wide variety of welding helmets. Everything from a small basic helmet up through our panoramic helmet that lets you see 180 degrees and really get good visibility and understand where you're welding. We also have consumables. We have a consumable kit for WP-17 TIG torch. But then we also have a gas lens kit. If you're looking to use a little bit less gas or get improved flow, maybe run a little bit more stick out, you can do that with our gas lens kit. Okay. We also have a tungsten grinder. One of the things you're gonna do when you start TIG welding, you're gonna dip your tungsten. You're gonna end up balling your tungsten. And having a tungsten grinder saves you a bunch of time. You're not running back and forth to your bench grinder, having to sharpen these back up. Definitely a good investment. Get it early on, it's gonna pay for itself. And consistent every time. Yeah. Whereas the, you know, if you're trying to use a sander, however you kind of make your tip, 
who knows how consistent it's going to be yeah. from time to time. So I could definitely see why tungsten grinder is helpful. It takes a big variable out of the equation. Absolutely. We also have our upgraded foot pedal. Guys that work on a bench love using that foot pedal because you can put your whole foot on it. Now you're rocking back and forth. But you saw you had no issues with the gray pedal that we have. No, that comes not standard at all. With the machine. Felt nice and comfortable. Yep. It was easy. So as you guys can see, it's not that hard to get into TIG welding. And we offer everything you need to get started. For more information on any of the products you see here, visit eastwood.com.